Hi, I'm Adam, um, and this is a video tutorial for uh, this, this little tool called the Residual Stream Viewer that's meant to uh, help interpret the residual stream of uh, transformer models, in particular GPT-2 small. And uh, yeah, so the residual stream of a, of a transformer is sort of, can be sort of thought of as like where the intermediate computations of the model are stored. It's where like, it's what it reads to and writes to as it's trying to figure out what token should come next. And um, that's what this tool is for, is trying to figure out what it's written and what it's writing, uh, what it's reading and what it's writing, um, or at least trying to figure out in any kind of detail what's going on there. Um, so you can find this thing at, you know, tinyurl.com slash residuer. Um, you can put, a user, uh, put in a username over here. There's no, there's no password. It's just a username. Um, so you can just kind of, all, all the stuff you do will be keyed to your username, but other people will be able to see it if they type in your username. There's nothing stopping them from doing that. And hopefully that's a feature, not a bug, because, you know, at the moment, presumably there's, you know, there's no reason why you wouldn't want other people to be able to be able to read the sort of the stuff you found using this tool. Um, in any case, uh, the thing that we're seeing here is, uh, you know, it's basically a bunch of different um, prompts that are from Open Web Text 10K, which is uh, uh, it's 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 a uh, uh, the data set on which it's a subset of the data set on which GPT-2 Small was trained. Unfortunately, it's kind of a a dark data set. Um, you know, it's got a lot of really uh gritty news stuff in it, but that's that's just sort of how it is, I think. Um, in any case, uh, what we're seeing is basically the way the residual stream works is that um, for each token in the prompt, a token, by the way, is like basically a word or sometimes a part of a word. It's what gets the, the prompt gets broken down into before it gets fed into uh, the transformer model. Um, so we can see like each of these each of these delineations here is one token. Um, for each token, for each part of the network, the residual stream is basically going to have a vector that represents the network's internal state at that token at that part of the network. So at layer zero, you know, the token remind is going to be like a 768 dimensional vector, basically. So that's like really, really hard to interpret, just like a 768 dimensional vector. What on earth do you do with that? So one thing you can do with that is you can try looking at different directions, like how, how, how that 768 dimensional vector relates to various directions. So the most naive thing you might do is if you want to if you're interested in, in the 760 dimensional vector, maybe you think about just the first entry in the vector. And you're like, well, if that entry is strongly positive, then you make it blue. And if that entry is strongly negative, then you make it red. That's one idea that you could have. And that's basically what's going on here. Except that actually the directions that we're looking at aren't a totally naive basis, like just like the first entry or the second entry or the third entry, but are instead directions that were found via a process called PCA, which stands for Principal Components Analysis which basically takes in a bunch of data. Um, in this case, the data would be, you know, the different residual streams added to the different tokens for a given layer. And it spits out what the most interesting directions are to look at in order of how interesting they were. So we could, for example, um, but yeah, so what we're looking at here is the, the most interesting direction in layer zero. Um, and apparently this, this seems to have something to do with like where in the prompt it is, although it's not perfectly uh, correlated with that, but it's, it's pretty close to perfectly correlated with that. Um, but that's apparently the, the, the most interesting direction in uh, layer zero uh, on the residual streams for each of these tokens. Um, yeah. Uh, in any case, let's, let's uh, as our first example, maybe let's look at the positional embedding because the positional, positional embedding is nice and uh, simple. It's just about the, the position of each token within the prompt. So the first direction is, uh, looks, like, looks something like this. So if we, if we take a look at what this is doing, it seems like it's lighting up the first the first token of each prompt strongly in blue. And then later, as you, as you get further and further along, you become more and more red, but there's sort of two different things going on. One is like, there's some really special behavior for the first token. And then afterwards, maybe the thing goes, sort of gets more and more red the further you go along. So maybe we could try describing this direction. In fact, someone already described this direction, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and describe it again, maybe. And so I'll say something like, you know, the first token lights up strongly in blue. And then after that, tokens seem to become steadily more red. Something like that. Great. And now we can, you know, whatever, upload or downvote the description. Maybe my description is pretty bad, so I'll just go ahead and download that. Um, okay. What about the uh, second component? 
Okay, so this is the second most important direction. And this one looks a lot like, well, you know, um, it seems like the further we get, go along in the prompts, the more blue we become, except something funky is going on at the first token. The first token's got some sort of special behavior. So we'll describe that. We'll say, you know, later tokens are more blue and earlier tokens are red, except there's special behavior at the first token. Okay, so now that we've done that, you know, if we're just thinking about these first two components, maybe we're like, you know, if we, we could look at some of, the, some of the later components too that were found by PCA. So th these are all different directions that were found by PCA. PCA didn't really know what we wanted, but it ranked these directions basically in, how, in order of how interesting it thought they were, which doesn't necessarily correspond to our notion of how interpretable these directions are, right? So maybe what we'd like to do is we'd like to find a direction that more cleanly corresponds to how far along in the prompt we are. Like, both of these things, you know, relate to that in some way, but they're both sort of like entangled with this, like, are you the first token? So maybe we'd like to sort of try and find two directions here, actually. One would just like smoothly go from blue to red as you got later in the, in the uh, prompt, and the other would just be about whether or not you were the first token. So what we can do here is we can click the find a new direction button, which will give us a bunch of sliders. And the cool thing that happens here is we can actually like mix and match our, our directions. So maybe if, if I do something like this, we sort of start to get a direction that maybe looks like it's smoothly going from blue to red, right? So we can we can call this one, you know, position in the prompt. And we can say this direction smoothly becomes more red as you get later tokens in the prompt, something like that. We can save this direction. And now this direction is in, in this list of my directions, which, which will be available to me, you know, whenever I want, as, as long as I'm keyed to this username. And then maybe let's try and find another new direction. And this direction, we can try and find, you know, uh, a direction that uh, is just about whether or not you're the first token. So this, this might be a little trickier, but we can try and do, I don't know. I mean, this is, obviously this isn't a, a super, like, rigorous or anything way of finding these directions. This is just me, like, this, 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 is, this is more for exploratory analysis, right? But as we, you know, try and mess with these things, what I'm trying to do is try, I'm trying to get this to light up in blue, and then everything else to light up equally but basically the same shade of red. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm making negative progress here. Um, whatever. This is good enough. So we're going to say is first token. That's, we'll call that the, the direction. And we'll say this direction is about whether or not the token is the first token in the prompt. We can save this direction. Great. And now, you know, if we, can, if we switch between these two directions or whatever, we can sort of see how things look, and uh, yeah, um, so that's nice. Um, and if maybe maybe I'd like to download this this direction so that I have it for for later use, like if I want to study it using code separately, I can click this button, and then I end up with you know this giant array of floating point numbers, which is totally inscrutable, of course. But you know maybe if you're interested in trying to do some more tests, like on an actual transformer, you want to you want to do some intervention along this direction, maybe in the residual stream. Having this array might be useful to you if you're doing something like that. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, let's take a look at another example. Um, let's take a look at, you know, layer one. So actually the second layer, because everything's zero indexed as usual. Maybe we'll look at the seventh component. So this is actually kind of cherry-picked. I happen to know this, this direction is... Uh, um, oh, wait. Uh, this isn't what I was thinking of. Um, weird. Oh, yeah. Wait, okay. I, 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 I think I understand what happened. Okay. Um, let's look at layer one. There we go. Yeah. So this this direction um, seems to relate to uh, uh, time in some way. Like you know, if, if 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 you sort of look at what's going on here, you might you might guess that uh, tokens that relate in some way to time are lit up in blue. Like we have Wednesday and January and October and today all lighting up. Um, and you know, you might have the theory that words that relate to time are going to light up more in blue. Um, and maybe, you know, you, you don't want to just immediately jump to describing the direction as, like, words that relate to time are lit up in blue, but instead what you'd like to do is, uh, you know, you'd like to test your theory. So one way you could test your theory is by submitting your own prompt. So maybe I'll, I'll say, like, you know, I'll see you this weekend, Dave. And this is a prompt that I, I wrote, and now what, what the tool is going to do is gonna, it's going to run this thing through GPT-2 small, and then at layer one it's going to, it's going to, 
look at how each word lights up with the direction. So maybe my theory is that the word weekend is going to light up in blue. We can take a look at see if that's true. So I'll click submit. This takes a little bit of time to run, actually. Um, I should I should like give you a, a you know loading indicator to indicate that something's happening. The reason it takes a little while to run is because it actually needs to run GPT too small on the prompt. Um, so let's just give it a little bit. There we go. So now we can see that weekend is indeed lit up in blue as we predicted. So that's kind of nice. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and describe this direction. This seems to relate to blue. Words that, words that are lit up seem to relate to time. Anyway, that's, that's at a very high level how you might use this thing. So, you know, feel free to just sort of mess around. You can look at different layers. You can look at how things light up at different layers. And, you know, you don't have to go too far to find sort of vaguely interesting things. Um, and hopefully this is helpful for trying to understand what the model is doing as it, you know, gets run on different prompts, right? Like in order to figure out what, it's, what different neurons are doing, it'd be nice to know what they're reading from and writing to the residual stream. And part of understanding that is going to be understanding what different directions in the, the, in the residual stream might mean. So, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically the features that are available right now. Um, if you want to, if you're feeling adventurous, this is, this is the default set of options here that you can look at, the different parts of the network. But there's actually way more parts of the network. Um, Transformer Lens, the very nice package um, for uh, uh, looking at transformers, um, has a bunch more different snapshots that you can take of the network's intermediate computation. So if you, if you open advanced mode, you'll actually see that there's basically every snapshot available to you here. And some of these snapshots, you know, just relate to, like, some of these snapshots have an associated head with them. So maybe you're, you're, you're interested in, like, the intermediate computation at, like, a particular part of the internals of layer four, head three. Um, and then what you're seeing here is, you know, how much each, each, each residual stream vector is lighting up in blue or red with respect to PCA on that particular sub part of the network in that head. Um, and that might be interesting too, hopefully, maybe. Uh, I've mostly just been looking at, you know, the, out, the, the, the residual stream outside of those layers. But if you're very advanced and you're interested in that stuff, you, you might want to use advanced mode. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. That's the residual stream viewer.